We will begin reading at verse number one, Matthew 21. And the word of God reads on this wise. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, then said Jesus to disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straight away he shall find an ass tied, a colt with her, loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straight away he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion. Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, a colt, the foal of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt and put it on, put it on their clothes, and they set him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and they that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come unto Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. Thus far, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. This time we have a musical selection coming from uh, our voices of praise. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
music ministry. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. He did a wonderful job. Amen. Amen. Certainly, I want to thank everyone that came out with Pastor on uh, Friday night. Amen. Amen. You all outdid yourselves on, on Friday. Amen. As we Amen. give God glory and praise. Fellowshipping and worshiping with Bishop Alton Little and the Randall Chapel Church. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. If you didn't hear it, go on Facebook Live. Amen. Amen. Go on Facebook and we we did a had a good time. Good time. Amen. All right, it's Palm Sunday again. Amen. All right, all right. Amen. We've got to tell the story one more time. Amen. From the scripture we read into your hearing. From that 21st chapter. And at night verse, it reads on this wise, and the multitudes that went before and that followed, crying, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I, I want to preach today with the Lord's help and the unction of the Holy Spirit from this thought. Triumph, tragedy, to triumph. Okay, all right. Triumph, tragedy, to triumph. Let us pray. I got it, our Father. We thank you for this opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk. We pray, God, now that you will lower us down in the deep well of your word. Bring us up with a fresh anointing. Give us clarity of mind and speech. Lord, you met us in the study. Now meet us in the pulpit. Fill our mouths with important stuff. Sit us down when we said enough. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Triumph, tragedy, and triumph. On Palm Sunday, April 9th, 1865, Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to Ulysses Grant, General of the Union Army at the village of Adipotomic's Courthouse in Virginia. This surrender uh, ended the bloodiest war fought on American soil. State against state, brother against brother. It was a conflict that literally tore this nation apart. Five days later, on Good Friday, April 14, 1865, uh, uh, America's most revered president, Abraham Lincoln, was fatally shot by John Wilkes Booth at the Ford Theater. It, it, it was Lincoln who wrote the Emancipation Proclamation that ended slavery in the U.S., it was Lincoln who gave the Gettysburg Address. Now, Lincoln hated war, but he was drawn into it because he believed that the only way to save the soul of this nation was to end slavery. On Palm Sunday, the war ended. That's triumph. Uh, on Good Friday, Abraham Lincoln, the first U.S. president, was assassinated. That's a tragedy. Welcome to Holy Week. Mm. Welcome to uh, the triumph and the tragedy of six days preceding Easter Sunday. Mm. Uh, and that's the kind of world that we live in, 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 in triumph uh, and in tragedy. Uh, triumph ended a terrible war, but on uh, on that Sunday, but the tragic slaying of the leader that was uh, uh, that ended the war that was Friday, from triumph to tragedy. Mm -hmm. One moment we can be on top of the world, mm -hmm. believing that that nothing can go wrong, mm -hmm. uh, and then suddenly, literally, all hell breaks loose. Kids laughing, they say, because oh, I said I asked about three. It's in the Bible. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I said, Pastor Percy today. <laughs> and suddenly all hell breaks loose. And, and that, my brothers and sisters, is life. Amen. And that, that's life. In 1942, the first American troops marched into London. Uh, the U.S. is entering the conflict known as World War II. 
Uh, the people of London uh, were cheering the American soldiers as they marched in, but but suddenly the troops turned uh, to the main street and the scene changes. The happy songs die on their lips, and, and they're looking now for the first time at, at the scene now where bombs had blown up an area in London. Uh, they're seeing great wounds on the city inflicted by the bombs, and suddenly they realize uh, what has happened in this city. One moment celebration, and the next minute great sadness from uh, triumph to tragedy. And that, my friends, is life. Celebration and sadness, triumph and tragedy. Uh, can juxtapose uh, triumph one day and tragedy the next. Uh, joy in pain. All right. It's All like right. sunshine in, in rain. It's all about it. It, 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 can, it can happen that quickly. Do you remember uh, uh, the days when they said that, that your home would be the best investment that you can make? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I remember when banks were giving, they were throwing money away. They were, they were just giving money away. Uh, you could get your house, your house appraised for for hundreds of thousands of dollars more than it was worth, and banks were just giving money away. Uh, 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 but 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 how foolish were we to think that the market would continue like this forever? Uh, we forgot in a free market uh, that bubbles have a tendency to burst. Uh, all it takes is one little uh, prick of the uh, 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 of a pen, and, and the bubble, the housing bubble, bursts. Had it not been for President Obama's bailout to the banks that saved us from the mortgage crisis, thousands of more people would have lost their homes. Uh, this is what happens over and over in history, but but we have short memories. Uh, it, it's easy to forget that Obama bailed out the banks and Obama bailed out the auto industry. It, it can happen in the blink of an eye. We can be on top of the world and the next minute be at the bottom of the back. Talk about well, it. Triumph Talk about it. and tragedy. Yes. Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Mm -hmm. and, and that's just the way life happens. Mm -hmm. uh, the amazing thing is that it happened to the Son of God. Uh, we, we, we shouldn't feel bad when triumph one day comes and, and, and tragedy the next. It happened to Jesus. He's acclaimed on Sunday, crucified on Friday. Wow. It, it, isn't that incredible? Yes. Didn't they realize who he was? Sure, he gave up his divinity when he entered the world as a tiny baby, but, but couldn't they see all the miracles that he performed? Uh, they saw him raise Lazarus from the dead. Couldn't they see he was no ordinary man? He was the Messiah, the, the Savior, the Redeemer, sent into the world by the Father to save the world from its sins. Now, how could they miss it? How, how could they not know who he was? How could they not know? Could it be because he came riding in? I ain't going to say it. On a donkey. <laughs> we call it the triumphant entry into the holy city. But he came riding on the foal of a donkey. Uh, how that, uh, how's that for lowering people's expectations? Mm. You see, kings aren't supposed to ride in on donkeys. Kings ride in on magnificent horses, not, not on donkeys. Uh, they ride in limos and not used cars. Well, uh, would we vote for a president who rode around in a rusted 1985 Ford Explorer? Well, <laughs> Stop that. Don't worry about it. I ain't talking about nobody's car. In a world uh, where image is everything. Uh, image is everything. Uh, everything. That, that's why y'all in debt now. Buying stuff you don't need, can't fit it, don't look good in it, trying to keep up with the Joneses, uh, to impress folks that don't even like you. Image is everything. But kings, potentates, royalty, military generals are supposed to ride in on great stallions. 
Uh, they're supposed to come in riding on military tanks, making a regal entry, showing power and strength. And that, my friends, is how kings and royalty enter a city. But Jesus entered riding on a lowly donkey. Uh, he should have consulted with his political advisors. Uh, then he would have, uh, then he would have uh, known better. But but he didn't consult with them. Uh, leaders are supposed to uh, project strength and power. Uh, I, I can see Twitter now and Instagram blowing up all the pics and the reels of the King of the Jews riding on a donkey. Jesus wasn't listening to the political advisors. He wasn't listening listening to Instagram or Twitter when he made his entrance into Jerusalem. Instead, he was listening to the prophet Zechariah. Zechariah envisioned, envisioned the king of kings, the Messiah, coming on a great stallion, but riding on a humble donkey. Zechariah also foretold uh, what the Messiah on the donkey would do. He would cut off the chariot from Ephraim, and uh, uh, in the war, uh, in the war of Jerusalem will be over. Zechariah also foretold that this is what the Messiah would say: peace to all nations. You know, people don't really want peace uh, among the nations. No wonder Holy Week moves from triumph to tragedy. Uh, the expectations of the people had been smashed. Uh, they voted for change. Uh, they wanted uh, a new world view. Uh, besides that, who wants peace of all nations anyway? Uh, now when uh, you have enemies uh, who won't destroy you, what are you going to do? Even Jesus' disciples expected him to be a conquering king. Uh, the, the two disciples uh, on the road to uh, Emmaus where uh, the resurrected Jesus had come, who walks along with them, uh, they said to him, uh, Jesus was the one who was coming to redeem us. Uh, uh, they still didn't understand even after the crucifixion, even after the resurrection, they were still looking for someone to be a political king. They wanted Jesus to establish an earthly kingdom and make them lieutenants. Of course, they were disappointed. They, they wanted Churchill, and they got Gandhi. They wanted Malcolm, but they got Martin. And, and so some of the crowd turned away, and the crowd turned against him. It shouldn't be surprising that uh, some who sang Hosanna to the highest on Palm Sunday were now shouting, crucify him, crucify him, kill him, crucify him on Good Friday, triumph and tragedy, Palm Sunday and Good Friday. The crowds turn their backs on the Son of God, Palm Sunday is about a conspicuous uh, a humility. That's what it's about. Not consumer power. Uh, not, not political might. It's about, it's about humility. And the obvious question today is, would it be any different today? Would we welcome Christ into our community, into our family, uh, even into our church? It is unsettling. Uh, it's an unsettling question. Uh, but it needs to be asked. The same group of people that yelled Hosanna, five days later, screamed for his blood. They would scream out, uh, he, he should be nailed to a cross. Uh, does that really surprise you, though? Does it shock you? How many Republicans were in the White House on January 6th? afraid for their life, and now deny that it even took place. Well. How many in the crowd with MAGA hats scream, make America great again, but don't respect the rule of law and, and believe that some people are above the law? MAGA Christians on the far right are, are, are comparing 45 
uh, 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 45 and all of his indictments to a suffering Jesus. Yeah, getting political. This is blasphemy. Well, this indicted felon said at a rally last week, I am your retribution. Mm. Jesus came to earth and was different from anything they expected. Mm -hmm. How in the world can we compare 45 with Jesus? Mm -hmm. uh, but you have the, uh, 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 the fascist Christian right comparing 45 with Jesus. Jesus was against oppressive rule of all sorts. Look at how he came into the world. He came in poor. He was from Nazareth, an outsider, marginalized, Jewish, once homeless, and a refugee. He came to save the world. That that's who Jesus is. Christianity has eroded into something uh, it was not intended to be. White Christian fascism is alive. You do know the Ku Klux Klan came out of the Protestant church. Wow. Uh, where are all the other Christian voices? That, that, that's what I want to know. I want to know uh, uh, why black preachers are, are jumping on the bandwagon. Black churches are jumping on this evangelical movement. I need to know. Hmm. But it's Sunday. Hmm. <clears throat> but Friday is coming. Hmm. What is, the, what is it that changed the minds of the people from Sunday to Friday? I, I submit that the crowd was more concerned about miracles than message. They were consumed with their own selfish motives rather than the plan of salvation. Uh, can we confront our own darkness? Can we confront our own need for repentance? Uh, would we welcome Christ into the world? Would we invite Christ into the church? Would Christ even want to come into our church? Yeah. Uh, Christ came uh, as a disturber, as an unsettler, as, almost as an agitator. This is the Christ that I serve. Uh, he didn't come uh, because of status, power, money, or image. So how... Does it square with the humble figure riding in on a donkey? When, when we look at uh, 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 the world's status, not very well. Look at our popular heroes. I'm, I'm thinking about the action movies that I like. Uh, I like action movies when uh, you're blowing up things. Uh, avenging past wrongs and uh, my my my, fa my favorite movies are is, are, are the Taken trilogy. Now, I know they say say he's a rape, but I like the Taken trilogies. There's a line. There's a line when his daughter's kidnapped. He says, uh, "I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you're looking for ransom, I I, I don't have money, but what I do have is a very particular set of skills." Skills I've acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare to people. I like that. I like that. If you haven't seen it, go, go watch the movie. Those are the kind of uh, movies and images we like of power and strength of Avengers. Again, I ask you to reconcile these images with, with, with the humble figure riding in on a donkey. Now look at our churches today. Churches that we consider successful have multi-million dollar budgets and multi-million dollar buildings and are trying to compete with the world's definition of success instead of focusing on Jesus. We're arguing about things like, should the preacher have a plane? Should the preacher buy this? Should the preacher wear it? We're arguing about foolish things. And of course the world is looking at this and they don't see the real Jesus. Do you understand uh, what it means to say Jesus is Lord? It means that we need to examine our lives, examine our goals, examine uh, what it is that we're living for, and ask ourselves, is it enough? Is this 
really the meaning of life? Or is there more to life? Holy Week should be a time of increased reflection and subsequent repentance as we measure our lives uh, and, and compare to the Lord's life and death. Triumph and tragedy. Palm Sunday and Good Friday. Juxtaposed uh, compared to one another. Uh, triumph and tragedy. But I declare life happens. Yeah. And the amazing thing is that it happened to the Son of God. Mm. Oh, would it be any different today? Uh, I, I, I declare it would not. Mm. There's a great book <clears throat> by James Allen. Uh, it's a book uh, that chronicles uh, lynching through photography. It's called Without Sanctuary. Uh, it's an array of photographs and postcards which have been collected by the collector James Allen. These photographs and postcards uh, are of lynchings that have taken place throughout the United States. This book is hard to talk about on Palm Sunday, but we need to talk about it. Oh, uh, the picture after picture of limp bodies hanging from the end of a rope. The images are grotesque and disturbing. Uh, but the more disturbing than that is not the bodies and the victims, even though that is disturbing and horrific. Right. In each picture was a gathering of ordinary white folks wow. who came to watch right, the right. atrocities take place. Yep. The lynchings were social events. Yep. People dressed up for the occasion. Mm. It was clear that these lynchings were a cultural phenomenon. Mm. Uh, they were events not to be missed. Mm. In, in one of the pictures, uh, 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 as a body is hanging from the noose, you can see in the background a man smoking a cigar uh. with a big smile on his face. Others are sipping beer and standing around gossiping and smiling and laughing. Uh, a couple is flirting and enjoying a romantic moment while people are hanging from a noose. Little boys being with broad smiles, seemingly filled with pride to be a part of such an auspicious gathering. That is terrible. Yes. There's something else that's troublesome. Uh, about these pictures, uh, upstanding white folks in these pictures, uh, the images, the events had not, not only been documented uh, in film, but they were also turned into postcards wow. that they were sending out as mementos to family and to friends. How crazy is that? And even though I'm repulsed, by these images. Uh, what I want to remind us today is that these images weren't from Rome 2,000 years ago. These images were from America 100 years ago. Uh, and not only 100 years ago, but we can go back to recent times, uh, to recent lynchings. And my brothers and my sisters, the dark heart a uh, beat that beat in those Americans still beats in the heart of America today. Well. And, and much as we would like to think differently, human nature has not changed in a hundred years mm. or in two thousand years. Mm. That is why any discrimination, any prejudice, hatred against people of another race, orientation, religion, or whatever that prejudice might be, cannot be tolerated. Uh, not by people whose Lord was hung on a tree while mocking soldiers gambled for their garments. Uh, Palm Sunday, Good Friday, I tell you, life happens. And it happened to the Son of God. And it still happens in our 
our world today. But here is what we must see. While the cross of Christ reveals the evil in humanity, uh, it also reveals the love of God which is uh, capable. Well. Untimely, uh, ultimately the, the story of Holy Week is one of triumph and tragedy. And then triumph on Sunday morning. Not only because of Easter Sunday, but because of Christ's victory over sin, death, and the cross. Uh, this is why the cross is so precious to us. Uh, I, I'm worried about crossless churches. You go to some churches and there's no cross anywhere. Uh, they believe that the cross is offensive. That the cross uh, will divide people. Uh, but it also represents God's grace, which covers all of our sins, even our most grievous sins. It was the cross uh, that made a way for us. It was the cross that forgives our sins. I'm done, y'all. Author Edward Brennan tells a moving story about his mother. His mother had to move into assisted living because of her all time. Uh, and it made it impossible for her to live by herself. Uh, and when she moved in, her son got a call from the supervisor. Uh, and the supervisor said, Sir, your mom's been swiping things from people in their rooms. Nothing major, just some socks and uh, candy bars. Uh, but there's one thing she took that we need to get back. Uh, it's a cross that's missing. Uh, when Grinham came to visit his mom, uh, uh, he was shocked. Uh, but that was her condition. His mom had been the most honest person he knew. She once drove 20 miles back to a store because the man had given her too much change. Uh, but the next time he visited her, uh, he gently chided his mom. He said, Mom, uh, uh, did you take anything that didn't belong to you? Uh, sitting in the lunchroom, uh, he asked, did you take somebody's cross? She shook her head. Her curly gray hair was bouncing around. Uh, he said, Mom, are you sure? Uh, his mother turned away. Then she reached into her purse and took out the cross and put the small silver cross on the table. She set it down. She said, I wasn't trying to steal. That was the only explanation she gave. Son, I wasn't trying to steal. Uh, later, uh, the, the supervisor turned the cross back over uh, to its rightful owner. He said, uh, the supervisor said, sir, don't be too hard on your mom. Uh, your mom is a charmer. Everybody loves her. But she's just trying to hold on to the things that matter to her most. The next time he came to the assisted living center, uh, he brought his mom a small silver cross. She stopped stealing after that. Eventually, they uh, had to move his mom to a facility for a higher level of care uh, because she couldn't take care of herself anymore. Uh, but what she did was she led prayer on Friday morning. She had forgotten almost everything else, but she remembered how to pray. Uh, and when she died, the saddest people of all were the people she prayed with on Friday morning. And when she died, she was holding on to that small silver cross, uh, which gave a new meaning to the line in the gospel song. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. My brothers and my sisters, all I'm trying to say is triumph and tragedy in this life. This triumph on one day, tragedy on the next day. But thank God we know the end of the story because at the end of the story, 
Lord's Supper on Holy Week. Gathered together with his 12 disciples. They were celebrating the Passover feast. And during that Seder meal, Jesus changed it from a common meal to the Lord's Supper. In the Christian faith, there are two ordinances of the church. One is baptism by water, and the other is holy communion. Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He said, I will not eat of this bread or drink of this cup until I eat it anew in the kingdom. What he was saying is, every when I go to my kingdom, Every time you do this, I'll be at the table with you. And so Jesus is at the table with us. Right now. Right now, Jesus is with us. And on that night, Jesus took bread and he blessed it, gave thanks. Like now, he took the cup and he blessed it. And at this time, I'm going to ask if our elders we pray for the bread and for the wine. And on that night, Jesus took bread and after giving thanks, blessed him and said, Take, eat, let us all eat together. When supper was over, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, This is the cup of the new covenant. Drink ye all of it. Eternal God, we thank you for this time of communion. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for your work on yonder's cross, and we thank you for saving each of us. We bless you on today. We give you praise, honor, and glory. And Lord, as we leave this your table, but never your presence, let us be mindful, O God, of the cross. Let us be mindful of your triumphant entry, tragedy on Good Friday, but triumph on Sunday morning. God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Bible calls it after supper, they went out and sung ahead. Let us stand and sing, I know it was the blood for me.
Thank you right now for these palms. Pray God your blessings upon them. May they be a sign and a symbol of your triumphant entry. God, we pray right now as uh, these palms are distributed. God, that they will be that sign, that symbol, that remembering, that remembrance, oh God, that you are our king and that you are the king of kings, lord of lords. Bless these palms now. Lord, that they will be a sign and a symbol for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, by way of announcements, United Clergy of the Orange is Mass Choir. One more rehearsal. One more rehearsal. Uh, if you are a singer, thank you for singing. Want to sing? Come on out on Tuesday. Our own Minister Webb is leading that choir. Amen. Amen. And on this Friday, this Friday, oh, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, we're going out. Amen. Amen. We're going out to uh, the Great Cornerstone Missionary Baptist Church, and I will be preaching on uh, uh, the meal, the meal, the meal, the meal. Amen. If you haven't been out to Lenten service this week, please come out. Please come out. And on Friday, Friday, the seven last words, and our own Minister Webb will be uh, directing the choir and as well preaching the first word. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So please keep him lifted in prayer. Amen. As he is doing uh, so much for the Lord. Uh, and on that same day, we have a Good Friday fish fry. Amen. Um, please, uh, Pastor Dave, please stay after uh, service today so we can... Um, Make sure we have all the nuts and bolts correct for this event. But that is Good Friday. Please don't cook on Good Friday. Uh, we will have fish dinners on that day. Amen. And my brothers and sisters, please keep our own Deacon Webb in prayer. Amen. Uh, on last Thursday, he was hospitalized, had, 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 had a minor stroke. And he is home now with Mother Webb. Prayer works and God is able to do all things but fail. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for this Palm Sunday, the beginning of Holy Week. We pray, God, that you will be with us this week as we continue to reflect, to repent, and to renew our spirits. God, we pray your blessings and your benediction upon each of these, your people. Go before them to guide, behind to protect, and on either side to prop them up. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. Present us spotless before your throne. May the grace of God, the sweet holy communion, rest, rule, and abide with us. Henceforth now and forevermore. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.
John's getting baptized. Uh, uh, All right, Brother John. Okay. I think you can baptize her. I like that. Zion, you got to take some to your mother and your dad. So you got to share this, okay? When you going back? Jose! Oh, 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 so how you been, Clark? I don't know. Let me give you the bylaws. Listen. And then what's going to test you on? I'm so 